Hello guys and welcome to another video from Xenotrust Tutorials. We are going to learn how to build a website like this in this tutorial. So let me just give you a tour of what we're going to build. So first off, I'm going to refresh the website and as you can see, there's this slide up animation that occurs when the website loads initially. Okay, so we're going to see how we can build this. Now on the um, navigation section, we have some menu items with this um, animation also. And we have this button here that, you know, increases in size and, you know, also has this effect. Okay, so um, basically we're going to see how we can build all of this. And this is actually a responsive website, okay? Not a very complex website, but I'm sure you learn something from it. So um, let me um, go to the mobile view to show you what we are going to achieve. So if I come to the mobile view, we have this um, hamburger menu here. And if I click on it, it slides down the menu items, okay? So um, it's important for you to know that we do not use any JavaScript here. It's purely HTML and CSS, okay? So let me just show you. All right, so um, like I said, the website is responsive, okay? So we're going to learn how to build all of this in this tutorial. If I try to, you know, increase the width of the browser, you see the way everything adjusts, okay? So basically, it's a responsive website here. All right, thank you so much. So um, first off, I want to do a shout out to frontendmentors.io. Okay, so frontendmentors.io is a platform that helps you to skill up as a front-end um, web designer or web developer. Um, they have several free um, designs that you can try out and you can actually use these designs in your portfolio. Okay, so let me just open this one and show you. So this is like a design. Um, you need HTML, CSS, and JavaScript knowledge, but of course, um, you can use it in your portfolio. So let me just show you. So this is their um, terms that says that you can feel free to use any of the things you build on the website in your portfolio. But also, I want to show you that they have a pro plan. So let me just um, show you their pro plan. Oh, I need to unlock pro plan. Okay, so they have this $8 per month pro, pro plan if you're paying yearly. Or twelve dollar per month if you're paying monthly. Um, I don't have a pro plan with them, and I'm not being paid to um, do a shout out to them. But I just feel it's important to give credit for the work they are doing. Okay. So one of the designs on front end mentor is what we are going to do here. Okay. Of course, with some modifications. Okay. So um, yeah. So that's it. Now one more thing. If you're absolutely new to web design or web development, or you are kind of rusty, your skills are not, you know. Um, up to date i want to encourage you to check out my youtube channel okay so first off i want to encourage you to subscribe to my youtube channel okay so i make tutorials on several um, topics okay and if you're new to web design or you've lost touch with html and css i have a playlist on my channel on html so just i'll leave a link in the description um, just check out the playlist on my channel. You can actually catch up, you know, and revive your HTML and CSS skills. So this is a playlist for CSS also, okay? And then if you've gone through the HTML and CSS, then don't forget to check out Flexbox, my Flexbox crash course and my crash course on the grid layout, okay? So with all of this knowledge, I'm sure you'll be able to conveniently and comfortably build um, this project with us, okay? So um, without any further ado, I would like us to get into the project. Okay, so but one more thing. If you would like to support me to keep making videos like this, then let me show you my course on Udemy. So I have a course I just published recently on Udemy on complete Git and GitHub. Okay, um, I actually go into details for git and github for beginners okay i take a beginner friendly approach i'll leave a link in the description i'll leave a coupon in the description to enable you get this course for less than ten dollars okay so if you would like to support me and if you like to increase your knowledge as a web developer because git is actually a um an area that every web developer must know okay so go ahead and check out the course on udemy Thank you so much and uh, let's get right into um, the lectures. So first off, I'm going to bring up my Visual Studio code. So let me just minimize this a little. Okay, so this is Visual Studio code. And basically what we have is um, an index.html file. 
okay i'll leave a link in the description to the starter file so we have an index.html file a styles.css and then from the front end mentors website there are um, some instructions okay and the content that we're going to use for this website okay so basically let's um begin coding so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to build the um we're going to build the header section okay so first off, I'm going to write the markup for the header section. So let me come here and I'm just going to open this with live server so we can see what we're doing. All right, so this is the page, blank page, okay? So I'll get rid of this and I'll start writing my markup. So the first thing I would like us to do is to add a header. So this is the markup for the header right here. So within the header, I'll do I'll add a container and within that container I'm simply going to add a nav and then I'll just add a logo so let me just write a comment I'm one of those people that actually comment HTML <laughs> some people don't like it so I'm going to add a logo with a class of logo an image with a class of logo and basically I'm just going to go to my images folder and I'm going to look for logo.svg. Okay. I'll leave the alt tag. Okay. Just as it is. And then I'm going to add icons. So let me just add a comment and say icons. And I'm simply going to add an input tag with a class of check and an ID of toggle okay so i'm basically using emmet here and the input type is going to be checkbox and just below the input i'm going to add a label so and let me just and this label is going to be for toggle And it's going to have a class of hamburger. Okay, so I'm also going to give it an ID of hamburger just in case I need to. to. Now within the label, I'm going to add an image tag. So I'll say IMG. And this image is just going to be my hamburger.svg. So I'll just see. So hamburger icon.svg. And then I'll save. Now remember that all of these files we are using here, we have them in um, the starter files. I'll leave a link in the description too. Okay. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add an unordered list with a class of navul and I'm going to give it an ID of navul as well okay so next I would add list items with um, a class of navlink so dot And within those list items, we are going to have a tags. So I'll just do a, and basically I'll just hit tab. So it, for now, it's going to go nowhere. So let me just add a hash. And within this one, I'm just going to say something like home. And what we do is I'll just duplicate this one, two, three, and five times. And I'm, I'm going to go ahead and change all of this. So for this home, I'll just say contact. And for the next one, I'll say careers. And the next one is going to say, okay, so this one should actually say about. This should then be contact. This should then be blog. And I think the last one is careers. Doesn't really matter anyway. So basically, this is what we've done so far. Okay, right here. So let me just increase it. 
So what I'll do next is I'm going to add outside the unordered list. I'm going to add an A tag that is going to have a class of button. So BTN. And then for now it's going to go nowhere. And within here I'll just say request invite. Okay. And then I'll save. Alright, so basically I think this is all we need for our header section. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some CSS styles and the CSS styles is going to help us style uh, this header section to achieve this, okay? So let's go to our styles.css file and let's begin to add. So initially we have some styles here. Um, this is just a regular reset we have here. And we have our font family set under the HTML and then we just set our body to have a width of 100% okay so basically what we're going to do is we're going to add some global styles so we are setting our font size of 10 pixels here because we actually want to use rem in this tutorial okay so we're going to use rem instead of pixels in the other aspects of the tutorial so basically let's just set some global styles. so the first thing I will do is I'll set my paragraph tag and I'll set it to have a font size of 1.6 rem. So whatever value I set with rem is just going to be multiplied by this um, font size set here. So 1.6 rem times 10 is actually 16 pixels. Okay, so basically that's how the rem works. So I'm going to set it to have a color. Um, I'm, I'm going to leave the color blank for now because I want to use variables and the variables have not been set. So I'm going to set a line height of 1.6 as well. Okay, so then for my section, so throughout the page, I'm going to be putting um, all the components in sections. So I'm just going to give a section a padding of 5 rem on the top and 0 on the left and right. And then within each of the sections, I'm going to be adding container. And I'm going to give the container, I'll just say I want it to have a width of 100% and a max width of 120 rem. And I'll set a margin of 0 and auto to center everything. And I'll just give a padding here. So on top and bottom 0, left and right 2.5 rem. And I will save. Now what I will do next is I will add in variables. So variables are just, um, just if you know JavaScript or well, you don't need to know JavaScript, but we can actually use variables. So variables are like containers where we store um, values, okay? So I'm just going to add a comment here and I'll say variables. Okay. And to use variables in CSS, you need to put it in the root like this. And then all of the variables you need will just be inside here. Now I'll go to my index file, okay, and sorry, my styles guide. And you can see that we have variables that, you know, we are supposed to use. So these are basically just colors, okay. So I'll just copy all of these colors. And like I said, I'll leave a link in the description to these starter files. Okay, so you can see these are the colors we're going to be using in the tutorial. So for example, for my text color like the paragraph color i'm going to use this grayish blue so this one here i'll just copy this and i'll go upwards to my color here and i'll just say var and within brackets i'll paste in my grayish blue and save okay so basically that's how it works so at this point i'm done with my global styles now what i'm going to do next is i'm going to set some utilities um, some utility classes that I will be using throughout the website okay so I'm just going to say like the so this is just a comment and within the utility classes I'm going to set a margin so just three levels of margin the first is going to be margin bottom so I'll say that U, which stands for utility class and then I'll say margin bottom and I'll say small and basically I'm just going to set a margin bottom of 1.6 rem okay and then I'm just going to copy this 
paste it, paste it, and I'm going to change this to medium. And I'll change the value here to 3 rem. And I'm going to set this to large. And I'll change the value to 5 rem. Okay. And then I'll save. So basically, we've not done anything on this um, header, but we have set the flow of the page, okay, in terms of our CSS file. Now let's go ahead and start um, adding styles to the header, okay? So I'm just going to come down and I'm just going to add a comment here and say header styles. And let me just duplicate that so that I can see it when I'm looking for it. And I'll add some... All right, so the first thing we're going to target is the header. And basically, we're just going to say we want it to have a width of 100%. And we want it to have a height of 7.5 rem. And we're going to say some padding, 2.5. On the top and bottom and zero on the left and right so let's give it a background color but um well i'll just say fff or i can actually use the var so i'll say var and i'll just say white And then we're going to give it a position of relative because we're going to need this position later on. And let's give it a Z index of 999 because we're going to need it to stay on top of every other thing. Okay, so now let's target our logo. So I would say the logo. And basically, I'll just give the logo a height. So, um, of 2.3 rem. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at this checkbox and want to hide it, okay? So I would say check. Oh, that's not what I want. So I'll say check. Dot check. And I'll say display. And I'll set it to none. Let's save. Okay, so our checkbox is out of the flow of the page and also our hamburger. So basically I'm going to hide the hamburger as well for now. So I'll just say dot hamburger. And I would say I want it to be play and I'll hide it and save. So our hamburger and our checkbox is out of the equation. Now let's go ahead and target our nav. And of course, I will set my display to flex and I'll say I want to justify content to space between and of course let's align items center and let's save okay so basically let me just expand this to show you what we have um, so we use flexbox to um, align these items side by side okay so let me just minimize this so we can see what we're doing so during the course of the um, my coding i'm going to need my flex wrap to be i'm going to need it to be wrap because the default is no wrap but before then, let me comment this out so you can see what it does much later. Okay. All right. So now let's go ahead and target the UI, the UL tag. So I'll say now and I'll say UL. And then I'm also going to set the display to flex. And let's justify content to center. And let's align items also to center. 
So that should be align items, not align self. And let's save. So basically what we just did is we, you know, aligned the nav items, the nav lists side by side. All right. So we're going to go ahead and add some more styles. So I'll say nav. And so basically we set a class here, I think. So let me just go back to my HTML file. And for our UL tag, we set a class of nav UL. Okay. So I think we can actually use that here. So instead of nav and UL, I can just say nav UL and save. I'll say dot nav UL and save. And so we still have the same thing going on here, right? Yeah. So let's work that way. So I would say dot nav UL one more time, hyphen UL. And this time I'm going to look at the list items within it. Okay. So I can as well say another list and list item, that's still fine. And then within that, I'm going to set my list style and I'll say I want it to none. And basically what that does is that it will remove the list style. So maybe I should try that here. Okay, so I'll just target the li tag directly from this class. And I would say I want it to have a margin. So I would say on the top and bottom, I want zero. And on the left and right, I want 1.5 rem. And so you see that this guy is spaced out here, right? Okay, so let's um, continue our styles. So we're going to target the li tag, but this time we're going to look at the a, the link um, this thing within it. So first off, I'll set the font size to 1.6 rem. okay and i'll set the text decoration to text d i'll set it to none what this will do is to remove the underline so as i'm saving you can see the changes taking effect maybe i should reduce the size of my code editor just a little okay all right so i'm going to give it a color and you know we're using variables for our color so i'll say i want a grayish blue color so I'll just do the grayish blue. And I'll just do some padding on the bottom. And I'll just do two rem. And let's set our position to relative. Okay, so we'll see why we are doing all of this positioning and data. Um, so let's do a li and a hover pseudo class. So as you can see, if I hover on these guys now, nothing happens. So I'll change some styles here. So basically, I'll say I want the color to change when you hover on it. I would say var variable and I'll set this one to dark blue. So this should be dark blue and I'll save. And so when you hover on it, you see that it changes just a little here. Okay. So now let's do um the let's do this effect we have here. Let me just space this out. So this effect we have here such that when you over on it you have this um, line that slides from the left to right so basically that's what we want to do now so let me just bring this up a little and let's come here go back to the code editor so what I'll do is I'll say I'll start from the nav to target it properly and ul li and I'll say a and before so basically I'm using a pseudo element here okay and the first thing when you want to use pseudo elements is to set your content in this case I'm just going to leave an empty content and let's set our position to absolute okay 
okay so basically we are setting position to absolute that's why we set our position to relative here in our a tag okay so let's continue and let's say from the left we want it to be zero and from the bottom we also want it to be zero the position that is and we want it to have a width of 100 percent and a height of let's just say 0.3 then so that's just approximately that's three pixels actually now let's now give it a background okay so instead of background color we're going to use background because we want to set a linear gradient so i'll say linear gradient and i'll say to right and let's add the first color so i'll say var and i'll just do lime green so these are the variables we set okay so lime hyphen green and i'm just going to add another comma and add the next variable so i'll say var and this time i'm going to do the bright cyan and i'll save okay so basically this is what we have here so um we have this line here but you notice that the color actually changes from left to right okay so that's what the to right means it actually means left to right so the color changes from here and towards here it becomes bright cyan yeah which was actually the variable we set okay so because we don't want this to show initially we're going to set the opacity to zero okay and let's save it so it disappears yeah now let's go ahead and add some transform so i'll say transform and i'll basically just make it zero so i'll use scale and x which is scaling in the horizontal direction so that will be capital letter x and inside the bracket i'll just put zero and basically uh, of course i'm going to add some transform origin so transform origin and i'll say left basically what this means is that when we hover when we finally um, display this before pseudo element it's going to animate from the left to the right okay which is what we have here on the main distance so i would say transition and basically i can simply just say transform but let me just leave it at all and i'll say 0.3 seconds now what i'll do next is i will then come and get this guy here i'll just copy it and i'll paste it in here now i'll then add a hover class here so basically i'm saying that when you hover i want the pseudo element to have the following styles so first off i'll just do the i'll say i want the opacity so where's the opacity here so i'll just copy this and i'll paste it here and i'll say i want the opacity to be one okay and i will get the trans um transform yeah so this transform and scale i'll copy this i'll paste it here and i'll say i want it to be one and then i'll save now watch what happens when we hover yeah so you see as we hover on it the um animation occurs okay so basically that's what we have here so when we hover on this guy here you see that the animation occurs okay so we have our animation set okay so now what we'll do next is we're going to go ahead and style the button okay so i'll look at so it's actually dot btn so dot btn and let's give the button a font size of 1.5 rem okay so we have it bolder let's give it a color and remember we are using variables so we are going to give it a color of white and i'm going to give it a font width of 700 and i will say i want text decoration so let's remove the underline the so text decoration i'll set it to none and let's save so you see that well we actually have the button color to white as well so that's why we don't see it but let's add a background so 
I basically want to add the same linear gradient background so I'll just come here and I'll copy this code instead of typing it out and then I'll come here and paste it in and if I save you see that we have the background here and we can see the button color so of course let's add some padding so um, before the background I should even add the padding so padding I'll just do 1.3 rem on top and bottom and left and right I'll do 3 rem and then I'll save okay so we have this bogus looking button here all right so let's go ahead and add some border radius the border radius and let's just do 5 rem so which is equals to 50 pixels and let's go ahead and do opacity and I'll set the opacity to 1 okay so basically this doesn't change anything but you see why I'm setting the opacity to 1 because I want it such that when we when we over on the button I want it to blur out a little okay and I want it to grow okay so let me come here and reduce this okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a transform property and I'll just say that I want it to have a scale of this time I'm just going to use scale and I'll say one or maybe I should just do scale X instead and because let's add a transition and of course we'll do all and let's just do point two seconds okay so now we'll now add a hover pseudo class for our button so I'll say dot btn and hover basically we just want to change the opacity to 0.8 and save so if I hover on the button you see that it blows out a little and let's change the transform to 1.1 And save so you see that it's you know broadens out a bit so let me show you what we have so basically this is what we have on the header so on a desktop this is what the header displays like okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to um, immediately add some styles to this to affect how it displays on a mobile device so if I begin to shrink this header you see that it doesn't display good okay so we need to set some media queries for when we get to a mobile device and that is exactly what we are going to do now so um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a media query section because we're going to have some other media queries for other aspects of the web page so what I'll do is I'll just add a comment and I'll just say media query and the reason why I'm adding all these comments is that when I'm trying to like go to different points in my CSS, I want it to be easy to know that, okay, I'm in the media query section or I'm in this section and all of that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add another comment and I'll say media responsive, I'll say mobile responsive. Okay, so these are mobile responsive menu queries. And of course, to add our media queries, all we just need to do is to say at and media. Okay, so we say we want it when it displays on a screen. And so I'm going to set the max width. And I'm going to say from 832 pixels. Now, the reason why I'm doing that is let me quickly come here. So if I begin to shrink this at 832 pixels, it will not be able to contain all of the items on this menu. So that's why I quickly change my menu to a hamburger, okay? 
and when you click on the hamburger you know you have the menu sliding down okay so down to the mobile um, view it displays like a hamburger so that's why we are setting it 32 pixels okay so i'm going to come here and let's come back to our code and i'm just going to come here and see at it 32 pixels okay and then i'll add my queries so all of my queries are going to go in here so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to hide this button at 832 pixels okay so i'll come here i'll say dot btn and i'll say display and i'll set it to none i'll save so you see that the button is out of the flow of the page okay so let's come back here and the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to look for the dot check okay so my dot check is already hidden so i don't need to um, add any style i'm going to look for the hamburger and i'm going to add some styles for my hamburger so the first thing i want to do is i'll set the display so remember that our hamburger is hidden so i'll set my display for my hamburger to inline block um let me save that so we have the hamburger here all right but we're not done we're going to set the position to absolute and of course from the top i would say that i want it to have to be two rems from the top and from the right i would also say i want it to be two rems from the right and i'll do cursor and i'll set cursor to pointer let me save that and see what we have so when we hover on the um hamburger icon here you see that it, it's as if we hovered on a link okay so that's basically what the cursor pointer does now i'm going to um look for the hamburger and i'll go into the image itself so i'll say dot hamburger and i'll say img based on the um where we lay that our page and i'm just going to say i want you to have a width of 3 rem and then i'll save so we have this menu looking bigger here right okay so now let's go and look at our nav url so i'll say nav url which is the class for our navigation the nav url and First off, I'll say I want it to have a flex direction of column. Okay, so remember that the default flex direction is row, that's why we have it like this. So I'll just say flex and direction and column. Let's save. So that this is what it does here. Okay, flex direction column displays it like this. Now, but it doesn't make sense because it's all jumbled up here. So let me quickly go up and set uh so this nav url nav url yeah okay nav and remember we said that the flex wrap we set it to wrap so i'm going to uncomment this out and save and let's come down and basically i'm just going to set my width to 90 percent or maybe before I set it to 90%, maybe before I save, let me quickly uncomment out. Let me comment out this part of the code where I set my flex wrap. I want to show you how the flex wrap works. So I'll save this, and as you can see, it's still in the middle, right? Yes, exactly. Even though we have that uh, width is 90%, it's still occupying the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here to our nav and I'll uncomment out the flex wrap and let's see what it does. So by uncommenting out the flex wrap, we have this guy, you know, on another row. So this menu is here, menu items here, they are displayed on another row. So this is like a different row here, right? So let's um, come down and continue adding some styles. So I'm just going to say I want a margin of zero. Of zero and auto. I just want to center things a little and let's do let's just do some padding here so for the top and bottom i'm say i want one rem 
and for the left and right I'll say I want zero padding and let's add a little bit of margin so margin but for just the top so I'll say I want the margin of four rms and basically I would say I want a background color and I'll use my variable and I'll say I want white so dash white and at this point I want to set a border I'll set one pixels and solid and I'll give it a transparent and I'll just set my border radius to 0.3 rem and I'll save okay maybe I'll change this transparent to light blue so just we can see what we are dealing with Oh, so not light blue but sky blue and I'll save okay so but what we want is we want this um, menu to you know go upwards to fly down from upwards when we click on this guy here but we've not set the logic for that using CSS so we're going to use CSS to um, actually set that so what I'll do is I'll say I want to I will set a transform and I'm basically going to say I want to translate in the y axis and if you are going downwards so if I set maybe like a positive value let's say like 3 rem and I save it moves it downwards right but if I do if I set a negative value and I save it moves it upwards so that's how the transform y actually works okay but in this case i'm going to set it to minus 150 pixels so i'll take it completely out of the flow of the page so minus 150 percent not pixels so percent right and of course i'll not forget to set the transition and all and i'll just say 0.5 seconds i want my transition my animation to be smooth and then i'll set a z index of 999 so 99 seems fine so instead of minus 150 i'll say something like minus 200 percent okay so it's completely out of the flow of the page and that's fine now so what we'll do next is we'll target the list items okay so i'll just see the nav ul and I'm just going to target the list items within it so li and basically I just want to have some padding around so I'll say padding and I'll say one rem on the top and bottom and zero on the left and right and I'll set a font size so font size of 1.6 and then I'll save so basically if I comment out this guy and so this is what the styles we're applying right now yeah so let me just shrink this up a bit so we can see what we're doing okay so this is the styles we're applying here all right so um let's go ahead and target the a tag so i would say li and i'll say the a tag and basically i'm just going to change the color to dark blue So dark blue I'll save so we have something darker here and I'm going to give it a font width of 400 okay. all right now I'm going to add a hover class for this guy here so I'll say li and a dot pseudo class hover and basically I'll say that when you hover I want the color to change so I'll say color and I'll say var and it's just going to change to line 
green and i'll say so basically if i hover on this guy here you see that the color of the um menu item changes to lime green okay all right so i don't think we had that in the initial aspect of the desktop view for our menu items so but there's no problem we can always set that for ourselves and basically what i'll do is i'll just come and say that for li okay, and i'll target the hover pseudo class and i'll then target the before pseudo element and what i'll say is that i want the opacity to be zero so basically the pseudo element before is what is responsible for the horizontal um, line we have under the menu when we hover so i'm just going to save and as you can see so apparently something is wrong here it doesn't work so let me just scroll up and see what i did previously Okay, so this is how I targeted it. So let me just grab this guy here and come down. And let me put it here and hope it works this time. So I'll save. And okay, so it works now. It's out. Okay. So basically, we are good to go. Um, now, what we need to do is we need to add some logic. And basically, when we click on this hamburger icon, we want this guy to slide from top to bottom. Yeah. So um, what I'm going to do is I'll just say something like, I'll add a comment. I'll just say something like, slide the menu when the hamburger is clicked. So I'm going to target the toggle um, ID. So I'll say toggle. And I'll say that when the toggle is checked, okay, so I'll say I want to add a style to the .nav your class, right? And basically, I'm just going to transform it. So I don't even need to write out the styles again. All I need to do is to come up and... So this is the nav your class i'll just copy this guy here and first off i'm going to comment this out and save okay so it's out of the flow of the page and then i'll paste it in here and i'll say i want to transform it to the original position and i'll just specify that as zero here or maybe i'll just do one percent so one percent and i'll save um so let me just quickly click on this okay so when i click on this you will see that the menu slides from upward down okay and if i click on it again it slides back up so we are using the checked um, pseudo class here so let's just see that one more time so this looks okay this looks nice um and remember this only occurs when we are in the screen width that is less than 832 pixels which is where the menu doesn't fit anymore so let me sc scroll up and as you can see we have our menu here okay all right so let's continue adding some styles so what we're going to do now is when we click on this hamburger menu we want it to have a, a red border around it so like so so you see that there's a red border around it that indicates that we need to close this guy so if I click on it one more time, you see that it disappears and that red border also disappears. So that's what we're going to do now. And basically, we're still going to use the toggle class. And I'm just going to copy this. So I don't have to type it again. So I'll just paste that here and I'll change my um, class to hamburger. And basically, I'll just set a border and it's going to be one px and solid and then it's going to have a color i'll just say red okay 
and then I'll do a border radius of 0.3 rem and then I'll do some padding of 0.4 rem and then let's save so if we click on it you see that we have this um, border around it okay all right so basically I think we're done with this section here so let me just quickly save and okay all right so we're going to go to the next section so let me expand this and show you what we're going to build so basically we're going to look at building this welcome um, section here all right so let me just quickly take a break and i'll be back shortly all right welcome back guys so we're going to do we're going to um, design the welcome section this first section after the header so i call it the welcome section um it's going to contain this image and this first bit of text with a button so that's what we're going to do now okay so first off let's write our markup so i'll go to my index.html and i'll just come down here and then i'll add a comment and say welcome section so what i'll do is i will um my index.html doesn't quite indent properly but i don't want to waste time with trying to you know sort that out at this point i'll just um, go ahead with my code so i would add a section with a class of welcome section so and basically within that i'm going to add a div with a class of container and another class of welcome okay and i'm going to save okay so next within this um, container i'm going to add another div with a class of welcome text okay and within that div i would add a h1 with a class of so basically this h1 i'm just going to do i'm just going to give it some margin on the bottom so u and i'll say dot mb so this is our utility class we are using right here so dot small okay and basically the h1 is just going simply going to say next generation so i would come to my styles guide no i'll come to my index file and i think i have the text somewhere here so next generation digital banking so i'll just copy it and i'll go back to my index.html and i will just paste that in here all right so but also um i'm going to add a span to my digital banking so what i'll do here is i'll just say span and of course i'll close it so i'll copy the digital banking and i'll paste it in okay and then i'll save so we have next generation digital banking here so next i would like us to add a paragraph so the paragraph is going to have a class of ub so we're going to give the paragraph some margin so i'll say u margin bottom and i'll say large okay and basically i'll just come to my index file and i'll copy so this is the text for the paragraph and i'll go to my index.html and paste that in there okay so let's save and see so we have the text already displayed here okay so next i'm going to add a div and no basically i'll just add a an a tag with a class of button so btn and this is just going to say it's going to go nowhere and it's going to say request invite okay and then i'll save so the button is actually not displaying because we set the button to display none when we come to a certain width okay in the previous header section so this but the button displaying well here but remember that when we come down here the button hides okay 
so maybe i should just go to my styles the css and rectify that so i would come to the button okay so just instead of hiding the button here i would say nav and button to make it specific and i'll save and so my button displays here all right so let's complete our markup so to the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add another div so i would come here and i'll add another div with the class of welcome image and within that i'm just going to add an image so that's img and basically i'm just going to target okay so we have the image displayed here okay so at this point we'll just go ahead and add some styles to our um, page so i'll go to my styles.css and i would so let me just take this media query down okay it's because it's going to be the last um, section for our page i'll come here and i'll add a comment and basically i'll just say welcome section so this is going to be welcome section And I'm just going to duplicate this three times so that I can find it easily. And let's get and let's start writing our styles. So the first thing I'll do is I would say dot welcome section. And I'm going to make sure that it has a width of 100% and the background color okay which is going to be var so i'll just say very very light gray and i'll save okay so we have the background color here and i would come and say welcome so this is the container basically i'm targeting i'll say i wanted to have a display of flex and i'll set the flex direction the flex direction to column reverse column reverse and basically i'll save okay so what that does is that it puts the image of the phone upwards and it puts the text downwards okay all right so let's continue adding some styles and basically i'm just going to target the image now so i'll say that welcome And I'll set the display to inline block. I'll set the text align to center. Let's save and see what we're doing. And I'll set the height to 33. To 38 rems. So these are just numbers I tried and they worked out fine. So, but before then, I'm going to add a dot welcome image and I'm going to add a before pseudo element. Now, before I even go ahead and add a pseudo element, maybe I'll just add some styles for the welcome image itself. So I'll say the welcome image, and I'll just say IMG, and I'll add some styles. So I'll say I want it to have a width of 100% of the container. Okay, so you see that it now displays, you know, centrally, and I'll say I want it to have a height of 48 rem. And I want to transform, translate x, translate y, and I'll say minus 15 gram. And I'll say, so it takes it upwards like we have here. Yeah. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to put this image behind 
uh, this background behind the image itself okay and we're going to do that using this before pseudo element so of course remember that when you're doing a pseudo element you have to add a content and in this case i'm just going to add a blank content and i'll set the position to absolute and i'll say from the top i want it to be minus 12 pixels minus 12 rems rather and from the right i want it to be zero so these are just numbers that i've tried and i saw that they were okay so i'll give it a width of 60 rem and a height of 70 rem and basically i'm just going to set a background image so and url i'm going to do images and i'm just going to look for the intro mobile so intro desktop intro mobile that's svg let's go ahead and set the background repeats to no repeats and let's set the background size let's just set it to cover and let's save okay so we have this image here displayed just behind um, the image of our mobile phone and that's basically what we have here as well all right so what we're going to do is we're going to now target the text okay so this text here so i'll come down here and i'll say dot welcome i think text and basically i'm just going to say that i want the text align i think align to the center and then i'll save so we have the text displayed just like this here and the last thing we're going to do is we're going to target the h1 tag okay because basically the paragraph tag we've set the um, global settings for the paragraph tag so i really am not going to do anything much but with the h1 i'm going to you know set it up here so i'm just going to say that's welcome and i think text and i'm going to target the h1 and i'm going to set a font size of 3.5 rem so that's going to make it a little bit bigger and let's set the font width so font width to normal and we'll give it a color of using the variable and i'm just going to say dark blue and let's do a line height of 4.5 rem and let's save okay so this is what we have here and it's quite similar to what we have here except that um our digital bank is displayed on the next line okay so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to target the span class so i'll just copy this and i'll paste it in here and i'll then say span because i'll come here and let's complete our curly quotes and i'm just going to set the display inline block as well so what that will do is that it will bring this digital bank to the next line so i'll save and that's exactly what we have here okay so i think we're done with this section okay so it's a really simple section we don't have too much problems with it um so let's see how we can make this display um differently on from the let's see how we can make it display differently on a tablet and on a laptop okay so but basically um some people like to wait until the end of the you know designing maybe the mobile version then they design the desktop version but personally i like to just add my media query to make sure that as i'm leaving a section i've sorted out everything concerning that section that's how i like to work 
so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come to my media query section and just below and just below my um initial section here i'm going to add another media query okay so i'll add a comment and i'll just say media query for the welcome section okay and then i'll add some styles so basically i'm going to add some styles from the mobile to tablet width okay so basically from 500 pixels to like 769 pixels so um, I'll, I'll add another comment here and i'll simply just say from mobile to tablet and then i'll then add my media query so what i'll do is i'll say at media and screen and in brackets i would say mean width now when you use mean width you are simply saying that for every dimension greater than what you specify so i'll say in this case i'll say 501 px so i'm saying that for every dimension for every device or browser dimension greater than 501 pixels when you use max width you are saying that for every dimension less than what is specified so i'll then say and i'll open another bracket and say max width and then i'll say 769 so 769 pixels and then you can then go ahead and okay so there is an error here so i spotted it quickly so let me just add that and i'll remove this okay so you can then add your rules so the first thing i'll do is i'll target the welcome image itself okay and i would so basically i'm just going to um bring this out a bit and i right click and do inspect inspect okay then i would so basically i'll just drag this to like 600 okay so like 600 so this actually looks fine okay but oh this is the one i've done so this is what i want to do okay yeah so basically i'm going to write um, media queries for when it's 501 to 6 to 769 pixels okay so that's the media query i'm going to write now so basically what i'll do is i'll just target the welcome image and I'm going to make the display so the display is in line block remember text align is center height is 38 rem And I'm just going to see just welcome before and basically we've already said that so I'm just going to change the top to minus 35 big rem and right so from the right is going to be zero and I'm going to change the width to 65 rem and I'll change the height to 83 rem and I'll then change the background image to of course do URL and so this time we're going to go for desktop intro SVG and then I'll save. Okay. So let's go ahead and target the image itself. So I'll say dot welcome. And I'll say IMG. 
and I'm just going to give it a width of 70% and I'm going to give it a height of 48rem and I'll just transform it to minus 15 I need to translate it first to translate y and I'll say minus 15 rem and then I'll save okay, so I think with the stars we've added it should look better now so I'll just close this up and so let me in expand this and see how it changes So apparently my stars have not taken yet so um, I think I need to refresh my live loader so I'll just close this up and I'll open this again so I'll open with live server and I think they've actually taken so let's see okay so gradually my stars have taken okay so I'm going to add another media query so I'll come to my styles and I would add a media query from when it's um, tablet to laptop so basically what I'm going to do is I'll just add a comment first and I'll say from tablet to laptop So our media query will be like and media and screen. And I'll then set a mean width of 770px. 770px. Okay. So basically I'm just going to say um so welcome section. So this is basically desktop, right? And I'll just add padding here of 3 rem on the top and 0 on the right. And then I'll add 1 rem on the bottom and 0 on the left. And that'll be all for that. I'll target the welcome section and I'll set the flex direction to row. And I'll save. Now let me just open this and show you what I've done. So basically, I by setting the flex direction to row, I made it such that the text displays first before the image. Unlike when you shrink down and the image actually displays first before the text, okay? So basically, that's what I did. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and add more styles. So basically, I'm just going to do the dot welcome and before pseudo elements so welcome image and before and i'm going to hide it okay so this is what we have which is similar to what we have so let me close this up which is similar to what we have here right okay so what we are going to do now is we're going to target this text because this text is currently centered but we want it to be left aligned on the desktop view. So I'm going to go to dot welcome text. And I'm just going to set the text align to left. And I'm going to give it a padding. of 5 rem on the top and bottom and 0 on the left and right and I'll give it a width of 85% and then I'll save so as you can see we have something looking similar to what we have here okay 
all right so um except for the fact that this is you know displaying outside of the um, image here outside of the background here so to achieve that we need to um, first off let me just do some styles for the h1 so for this h1 here so i'll say dot welcome text and i'll target the h1 and i'll just change the font size so i want to change the font size to 3.5 but let me just confirm what i set the font size to previously it's actually 3.5 previously so i i don't think i need to change that so i'll get rid of this and i'm going to go straight to the welcome image so so this should be dot welcome image and basically i'm going to give it a width of 100 percent and i'll set the position to relative and then i'll now say that welcome as an image and i'll target the img and Basically, I will set the position here to absolute, and I'll give it a width of 40 rem, and I'll give it a height of 65 rem. So I've actually I actually have these values here okay so i'm just getting them so i'll say top minus three rem and from the right i'll say zero and i'll set the z index to one and then i'll save okay so let's okay so this is what we have here so by the time we reduce the width it reduces and it shrinks like that okay oh this is what we're working with i was looking at the previous one okay so let me go to the desktop view and show you so on the desktop view this is what we have and when you shrink it it shrinks and okay Alright, so basically I'm going to go to the next section of our page and basically let me just go to my um, desktop view and show you what we're going to build. So we're going to build um, this section here. So the about section, why choose EasyBank and all of this, we're going to build that using um, the grid layout. Alright, so I'm going to take a break now and see you in the next section. Alright, welcome back guys to our um lecture we're going to build the next section but before then i discovered that there was an issue a typographical error on my code okay so in the media query for the welcome section specifically from the mobile to the tablet i discovered that this class was not properly written so welcome i think image and then the pseudo element of before so i made a mistake here and apparently that's why we have this straight line here which doesn't look like what we have here curved okay so i think if i save this now so i can change this back to 35 and i can change this back to 83 and if i save this now we should have this curved um border here okay just like we have here all right so apologies for that so let me go to the next section where we're going to build the about section okay so um about section the html is quite um, much so let's get right into it so i'm going to add a comment and i'll say about section so apparently something is wrong with my 
um, Visual Studio Code Editor. It's not it, it's not indenting my code properly, but I don't want to go into that now. So first off, I'm going to create a section, right? So I'm going to give it the class of About section. So and I'm going to create another div with the class of Container and another class of About. Okay, and then within that div, I'm going to create my another div with a class of about text. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a h2 tag. And basically, first off, I'm going to give it a u mb, so margin bottom, and I'll give it a large. And then I'm going, to, I'm going to give it a class of heading secondary. And so basically what that means is that I'll later go back to my H1 tag and give it a class of heading primary. Okay, but let's just continue our code for now. And I'll add a paragraph this time and I'll give it a class of U, I think MB. And I would also give it a large bottom margin. Okay, so what we'll do now is we're simply, oh, this should be outside of the H2 tag. So basically, I'm simply going to go to my index file and I'll get the why choose echo bank, why choose easy bank. And I'll come back here and paste it in. And then I'll go and get the text. Oh, sorry. I'll come here and get the text. And then I'll paste it in here. Okay. All right. So what I'll do next is I'll come outside of this div. So let me just give some space. And then I would create another div with a class of about item. And then I'll create another class, another div rather, with the class of about item box. Okay. And then within this about item div, I'm going to create an image, a H3, and a paragraph. So basically, let me just open this up and show you what we want to do. So we just want to create this image, this heading, and this paragraph. Yeah. So let me come back here. And I'll say image, so IMG. And I'm going to give it a utility class of UMB and small. And the image I'm looking for this time is my icon online. So icon, where are you? So icon online.svg and then I'll save. So let me come back to my and then I'll save. Okay, so this is basically what we have here. Okay, um so what I'll do next is I'll create a h3 tag. And I'm just I'm simply going to give this class this H3 tag a heading a class of heading second tertiary and another class of UMB small. So that's a bottom margin. And let's go and get the text. So the first is online banking. I'll come back here and I'll paste it in. And then let's add a paragraph tag that is going to just be a paragraph tag really. And let's come to and copy the text. And then let's paste it inside and save. 
okay so this is basically what we have here now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to copy and paste this two more times i think so let's just come here and see so one two three all right so two more times so i'll just um come to the about item box div and i will grab all of that and one two okay so we have it twice so um i'm just simply going to change the items within it so i will start from the image so let me just come up here so this second image i'm going to change it to second budgeting and then i'll save So we should have a different icon here and i'll come to my index file html and copy the text we have there and i'll replace it oh it should be this one i think so if this is the third then this is the second so it should be this one and okay this is the image that should have icon Dash budgeting and I'll copy the text and I'll replace it here okay and I'll come to my index file and then I'll copy fast onboarding and I'll come here and replace this and let's get the text and let's paste it in here as well okay so we're just going to change this to icon dash onboarding and let's save okay so basically we have the basic um markup sets so this is what we have now let's go ahead and add some styles so what I'll do is I'll go to my styles.css file. So let me scroll up. So just below, just above the media query, I'll first of all add a comment, and I'll say about section. And I'll duplicate it so I can see it clearly when I'm moving okay so let's go ahead and add our style so the first thing we'll do is let's target the dot about section and basically let's just give it a background color and we're going to use a variable and we're going to say light grayish blue okay so it's and save so let me expand this so you see it's different from the first one all right let's go back here and let's do that about so this is for the container and i'll set our width to 100 percent and i'll set my text align to center and i'll save and let's do heading secondary and basically for the heading secondary i'm just going to give it the font size of three rims so let's save so this is what we are working with now this font size here so maybe i should reduce this so we can see what we're doing i'll give it a font width of normal and i'll give it a color of bar and I'll say dark blue. Let's add a line height here of 4.5 rem.
and let's save okay so this is what we have here which is similar to what we have here so i choose easy bank okay all right so let's go ahead and target the about item okay so i would say dot about dash item and i'll just give it a display of grid so this is where we begin using the grid system and if i save this nothing should happen but then if i then do grid column so grid template columns i will then say <clears throat> repeat and i'll open a bracket and say auto fit and i'll set the min max to 25 rem and one fr so if you don't know about the grid system just check out the video i have in the description where i talk about grid system and let's save so by by adding this rule automatically we created a responsive um section so if i expand this and i try to shrink it you see that it automatically shrinks and adjusts okay all right so what we're going to do is we're going to target the about item box itself so dot about item and box and i'm going to set the display to inline block and then i'm going to set the text align okay well maybe there's no need for the text align but before then i need to add some row gap so i'll say row i think gap and basically i'm just going to say i want like forum and i also set the column gap to one rem and then i'll save okay so we have some space between the rows and the columns okay so one more la one last thing we need to do i don't think we need this um rule here so let me just save it okay i don't i really don't think we need it so let me see it's still responsive okay so let's do the heading um tertiary so i'll just come down here and i'll say dot heading and hyphen tertiary and basically i'm just going to set the font size to two rem font weight is going to be set to normal and i'll set the color to Oh, I should say var first, and I'll say dark blue. Let's set the line height to four point five rem. Now, you will notice that for the heading, tertiary secondary and the primary we're going to set they they are going to have some common values okay like the color and the font width so basically what we can do is we can actually condense them and create a common class for all of them okay so we can create a class of heading and put in all of the common values there and then we can then use the heading primary secondary and tertiary as modifier classes but uh, you can do that on your own um so let's just quickly save and let's go to the next section so basically i think this our section is ready let's look at what we have oh so it's not ready it's not ready okay so it's not ready so it's not complete rather so what we need to do is that we need to say that when is in um when it gets to a particular width we want to add some extra styles okay okay so basically that's what we need to do because it's aligned to the left when the width is increased as against being centered when it's on the 
um, mobile view, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to my media queries and I'll go to the media query for the um, tablet to laptop size. So where is it? So from tablet to laptop. And I'm just going to come in here and first of all, I'll add a comment and I'll say media query or about section, right? And then within this section, I'll just target my about text. So I'll say dot about, about hyphen text. And I'll set the width to 50%. I think that was what I wanted to do initially. So please forgive me. Let me go up and do something. So yeah, so this is my about section. Do I have about the text? So I don't, okay. So I think my about the text can come here. So this should be dot about hyphen text. And I think I said the display to inline block hyphen block. And I said the text align to center and save okay okay so this about text what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back to my media query and yeah so i'll, I'll just change the style here for when it's on a desktop view and i'll say i want it to have a width of 50 percent instead and I'll set the text align to left. And then I'll save. Now let's see our browser and see what we did. So basically, if I okay, so basically on the original, this is what the original looks like. Let me open it up. And when we open it up, we see that it's this text here comes to the left. It becomes left aligned. And when we close it up, it becomes centered. Okay. So let me come here. Okay. So we have this text centered. Okay. But I think the margin between this guy is more. So we can actually set that. So we have the text centered. And when we expand it, Okay, we also want to have it aligned to the left. Okay, so maybe what I'll do is instead of saying width, I'll just say width of 100 and save. Okay, so it's aligned to the left, but I actually want it to have a width of 50%, <clears throat> but not centered. Okay, so what is making this guy centered here? Um, let's see. Okay, so I think I found um, like in a bit of the problem. So um, I use about here. Okay, so maybe what I want to do here is I want to say about text. Okay, and for my about text, then I don't need this here anymore. So, and then I need to add my, I need to add a style for the about um, item box. So maybe before my heading tertiary, I'm just going to say that about item box. And I'm just going to say display to inline block. And I'm going to set the text line to center. And then I'll save. Okay. So um, by adding this style here, we've now achieved what we want. So this guy is aligned to the left. So let's go back to our media queries section for our about us. 
okay so this is the media query for about us and basically the about text we aligned it to the left okay so that's why we have it here so let me just reduce the width of the browser and you see that when it gets to the mobile version it becomes center aligned and when it gets to anything from tablet to desktop it becomes left aligned okay so we're going to add one more media query before we move on to the next section and basically we're just going to target the about item box so i'll say dot about hyphen item and box and basically just what i want to do is i want to see text align left and i'll set it to left and that's all so as you can see it's aligned on the left right when it's on tablets and desktop so left but when we get to mobile it becomes aligned center okay so basically that's what we achieved with this um, lines of css here in our media query okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to build the next section so um, we're done with this section here and we're going to build this articles section okay so um i'll take a break and i'll be back shortly all right welcome back guys to our um tutorial so we're going to build the article section here the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write the markup so i'll come to my code editor and i'm just going to you know space this out a little and let's go to index.html and let's write a markup so first off i would add a comment and i'll simply say article section and let's now add section with a class of article section and then i would add a div with the class of container and then i'll add another div with a class of about text so essentially i want to achieve this um latest article um heading and this text here so what I can do is I can just go and grab this about text up here. So let me just quickly look for it. So, so why echo bank? Why choose echo bank? So I'll just come here and grab these guys here. Okay, and then I'll paste it here. But this time I'll change the text to latest article okay so back to index.html and then i'll paste my latest article here and i'll go back and grab the paragraph here and i'll replace it here and then if i save you will see that we have um, latest article and this guy here okay so let's go continue and add another div so i'll just add a div with a class of articles and within that div i'll add another div with a class of article box And basically, I'm just going to add an image, image, and text heading and another um, paragraph text. Okay, so basically, that's what we're going to do. So I would come here and I'll say IMG, and it's going to have a source of currency. So I'll just search for currency. okay so what i'll do next is that within this div i'll add another div with a class of article content
okay but then i would like to give this image the class the utility class of u i think margin bottom i think small okay and i'll save okay so within this guy here is where i will now add my paragraph first and this paragraph is going to have a class of article author so p dot article hyphen author and i'm going to give it a utility class so i'll say you i think nb i think small as well but then i should add a dot here okay and i'll hit the tab key and i'm simply just going to grab the name of the author so but before then let me just complete all the so i would add a h4 tag so h4 with a class of article heading and then i'll add another paragraph with the class of article except okay so basically this is what we're doing um what i'm going to do is i would i would duplicate this um four times and then i'll then fill up the contents within it so i'll just come here to my article box and copy all of this and one three and four okay so let's go to the first one so article box now let's come to index um, file index h index file dot html and get the content so the first is by claire this guy and that's article author and this is the article title so this is the title and then this is the text so index html and v okay so let's do for the next one and let's say so i may just um forward this aspect when i'm recording when i'm um, editing the video because really we don't need all of this okay it's basically grabbing the content and placing it within where it's supposed to be so I may just actually forward it so you can do it yourself and save time. Okay, so I think I'm done with my article section. So let's just see what we have. 
Um, one more thing, I need to change the images within the article section. So I, I'll just do that quickly. So the second image is going to be restaurant. The third is going to be of a plane. And the last is going to be confetti. All right, so we're done. So let's just see what we have. So this is what we have and not quite pretty, but we're going to style it with CSS. So I'll come to my styles.css. And as usual, we're going to do article section. So this is about section. And just below this guy here, we would add a comment and And let's duplicate this as usual. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is we'll add dot article section. And we're going to give it a background color of very light gray. Okay. And then we'll save. Okay, so let's see. Okay. So let's now target the article. So well, this should be dot article. And we're going to set the display to grid. So essentially I can simply just copy this my grid uh what's it called settings here. But you know something we can when we refactor our code, we can actually do it such that this can be applied once. Okay. So I'll come here and paste in and save okay so this is what we have just by that simple um, line of code we copied similar to what we have here okay so but then we need to add some more styles so what i'll do now is we'll then target the article box so i'll say dot article um hyphen box and let's give it a background color so we want it to be background color to be different so of course we say var and we want it to be white and let's give it some border of 1px and solid and we're going to make it transparent and let's do border radius of 0.5 frame which is actually five pixels. Then let's save. Um, yeah. So let me space this out a little. So it seems like our column gap is not very effective. So I'm going to make the column gap two rem and save. Okay. So let's see. Let's set our overflow to hidden. Overflow. And so this should be overflow. And set it to hidden. Let's see. Okay. So by setting our overflow to hidden, we make sure that the size of the image stays within the article box. Okay. So that's what we just did here. So let's um, continue adding some styles. Now we're going to target the article box and then the image um, element. So ART. And we're simply just going to set a width 
of 100% of the container but what we are even interested in is the height now we're just going to say 23 rams okay so let me show you what we did okay so we just adjusted the size of the image here yeah? all right so let's add some more style now we'll go to the article content so that article and basically we are first of all we are just going to add some padding so let's just say two rem all over and save and basically this is what we just did here so we added some padding around the article content so this is the image and this is the content here all right let's continue uh, next we're going to go to the article author so And basically, we're just going to set the font size to 1.2 rem. And save. Okay. So, this is the article author here. Um, next, let's do article heading. And of course, let's do font size as well. But this will be 1.7 rem. And our font width will be normal. Okay, so let's save and see. Okay, so this is what we have here. And we're going to give it a color of bar and dark blue. And I think that will be all for that. And then we're going to get the article excerpt. And I'm going to set the font size to 1.3 rem and save. Okay. So we need some kind of padding um, below the article heading. So um, I'm just going to go to the HTML and I'll look for the article heading. So this article, yeah, so class four article heading and I'm just going to give it um, a utility class, okay? So let me just go up. Um, article heading so i'll just give it a u hyphen md and hyphen let's just say medium and save so this is just for the first one here so the medium seems much compared to what we have here so i think i'll reduce it to small so let me just make it small and save and this seems fine okay so basically i'm just going to copy this and put it in all of the article heading. So where, 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 where? So one and two. I'm sorry I missed that earlier. Sometimes these things happen. And the last one and save. Okay. So we have the padding here. Okay. So um let me go ahead and resize this guy. To see what we've done so far so as you can see um, if I try to shrink the size here you see that okay well I think the space between this article latest article and this guy is too much so I'll go back to my text editor and let's see where are we so somewhere here so large okay so maybe I'll just make this small and save and let's see what we've done so small seems fine okay and it should actually be small here too okay so i think i should just go up and fix that so heading tertiary okay so somewhere here and i'm just going to change this to small and save okay so 
so essentially we are getting there okay gradually we're getting there so i'm going to take a, another break and i'm going to build the footer section okay so essentially i'm going to build this section we see here um so see you soon all right welcome back guys so basically we're going to build the footer section at this point so what i'm going to do first is i'm going to write a markup for the footer section so i'll quickly come here and say footer okay so it's going to be in the footer um container so i'll create a div with a class of container and within that div container i'll create a div with a class of footer and maybe i should just give space at this point so next i'll create a div with a class of footer icons okay that's for this first part here okay so i'll say dot footer and icons and the first thing i'll do is i'll create another div with a class of footer logo so and it's going to have a utility class of margin bottom and large and then let me just scroll down just a bit i'll then add my image so img and the image is going to have a class of footer logo um is it necessary okay i don't think it's necessary but okay i'm not sure so footer logo so i'll just create an image tag and track the images folder and look for the logo.svg and save so let's see what we are doing as we are editing so this is the uh, logo here now what i'll do next is i'll then add all the icons okay so within the footer icons here is where i'll then add my icons so i'll say first of all put them in a, in an a tag so a the a tag is simply just going to go nowhere so i'll do hash and i'll then create an img where i'll put in so and i'll just look for facebook icon and that's it so i'll save so we can see what we've done so it's actually white so what i'll do is i'll just give my footer um, a background color so i'll come here and let's add a comment for the footer and i'm just going to make it fast so i'll say footer and i'll just do some padding of control v i'll do some padding of 5 rem on the top and bottom and zero on the left and right and then i'll say i want a background color of bar oh, it should not be so this should be dark blue and i'll save so you see here that we then have our logo display here okay so what i'll do i'll go back to my markup and i'll just grab all the other logos and put here to save time so basically there are five logos if you check your um for your files your image files you see that there are five logos so i'll just um, grab the five logos and paste here i'll pause the video and do that quickly so we don't waste time okay so i just simply got all the logos i needed and i'll save so we can see what we have done so we have all our logos here all right now let's go ahead and create the next um, area which is the footer links so i would come outside of this div and i'll say dot footer hyphen links and then within it i'll just add an unordered list that is going to have some list items um, that will have an a tag so i'll hit tab and the a tag is just a blank link going nowhere but it's going to have about us so a about us and then i'm going to just duplicate this and change the content so about us the next one is going to be contact and the next one is going to be blog okay and then i'll save 
so this is what we've done now what i'll do is i would replicate this footer link again with all of the div and i'll just paste it in but then i'll change the content of the link this time it's going to say career and this one is going to say support and this one is going to say privacy policy right and then i'll save so let's see what we have so we have all our links here okay so now let's add the last section in our html and that's going to be the footer credit so i'll just say dot footer credit so creating a div with the class of footer credit and i'm just going to create another div but this one is just going to have our utility class so dot u hyphen nb hyphen large and i'm going to put an a tag within it and the a tag is going to have a class of btn so that should be a dot btn and then i'll just give it it's going nowhere and it's going to have it's going to say request invite request invite and i'm going to save so basically that's what we have this button here all right so lastly i'm going to add a paragraph tag but i'm going to put it in, in, in its own div so let me just undo that and so i'll say dot footer text and just add a paragraph tag and i'll get my notes here so i'll just copy this at easy bank all right reserved and i'll come and paste it within the paragraph tag and save and yeah so this should be it for our markup so next i'm going to add my css to add some styles so i'll go to my css file and i'll go to the footer section here and i'll just quickly target dot footer and i'll say i want it to have a display of grid and i'll say grid template columns of repeat and this is going to be auto fit and i'll set the mean max to 25 rem and 1 fr and i'll go ahead and set my row gap to 4 m so you notice that we've done this before and i'll set the column gap to 2 rem all right so let's see what we have so basically by adding our grid um css we've spaced out um these guys here um, so what i'm going to do is i'm going to um, target the icon and the a tag okay so basically i'm going to target these guys here and i'm going to space them out first off let me remind myself of the um, markup so let me just go up and see so we have this tag this um, image is here so we have the footer icons and the a tag all right so i'll go to my styles.css and i'm just going to say footer so dot footer i think icons and i'm targeting the a tag and basically what i just want is i want some padding so i'll just say padding on the right so that right i'll just set maybe one rem so that's 10 pixels and if we come here we see that it's spaced out now all right so next i'm going to target my links okay so i will simply come here and say footer links and i'll look into the ul look into the li and the a tag and basically i am going to set the color to, so let's see 
Oh, I need to add some padding here too. Okay. So first off, maybe what I'll do is I'll target the list and I'll add some padding on the bottom. So padding hyphen bottom. And I'll just say 1.5 rem. Let's save and see what we have. And then I'll remove the um, dot list style. So let's go ahead and add list style. So I should just maybe put it first. So I'll say list and style. I'll set it to none and save. And as you can see, we have um, the list style is gone. But when we hover, we don't. We're not achieving the what we want. So if I come to the original, you see that when we hover, we have this lime green color. So let's come back to our CSS. And let's, I'll just copy this. And I'll come here and paste it in. But this time I'm going to target the A tag. And I would say I want it to have a color of grayish blue first. So var and grayish blue. Okay, so I think something is wrong somewhere. Okay, here. Yeah. So grayish blue. And then I would copy all of this and paste it in here. But this time I would say I want to add a pseudo class. So hover and I'll change the color to lime green. And then I'll save. So if we come here, you see that we have this color here when we hover on it. So basically, we've been able to um, we've been able to design the page. But there's one thing we've not done, and um, that is we've not added the animation. So if I click on this, you see that there's this animation that moves the content of the page up. So I'm going to show you how we can add that right away. Basically, what I want to do is I'll go to the bottom of my styles and add the animation. So I just want it to be the last thing on my styles.css. So I'll come here, add a comment, and I'll say animation. Okay. But let's make it visible. Okay. So I'll just say at keyframe. Right. And I'll just add the name of the animation. So the name of the animation is just, I'll just say move up. And then I'll then place the animation properties here. So I'll say at 0%, right? I will then set a transform property. And this time I'll say translate Y. And I'll say 100%. So when you are doing translate Y, when you are using translate Y, any positive value is going to push that content downwards, while a negative value will take it upwards, right? So I said at 0%, I want it to be 100% downwards, okay? So I'll then say at 50%, I want, I'll then, let me just copy this. Okay, so I'll copy this and paste it and then I'll copy all of this one more time and then I'll paste it so at 50% I want it to translate upwards to 50% and then at 100% I want it to translate to the original position so I'll then change this to 100% so 100 and I'll save so basically, I've been able to successfully create um, this um, keyframe rule, okay? Now, what I'll do is I'll create a class just below the keyframe rule. So I'll say that move up. And within this um, class, I'll then create the animation property. So I'm just going to say animation. And of course, the name of the animation is move up. So move up 
and I'll, I'll say I want the animation to take dot eight seconds. That's the animation duration. Um, animation iteration count is going to be one, and the animation is going to be linear. And then I'll save. Of course, if we go to the page and refresh the page, nothing happens. Sorry, let me go to our, our main page. If I refresh this page now, nothing happens. What I need to do is I need to add this animation class to the affected section. So basically, I'm going to add it to the welcome section and the about section. So I'll come to my index.html and I'll just locate my welcome section. So let me just scroll upwards. And um, so this is my welcome section. I'll come here to my container class and I'm going to see move up I'll copy this and come to my about section the container class and I'm going to add the move up as well I'll save and as you can see if I refresh the page we have uh, items moving upwards into the page okay so that's the animation we're able to achieve all right so let's just um, you know look at what we've done so far so Basically, we've been able to create this page in um, the tutorial. One thing I haven't done is I've not linked any of these menu items to different aspects of the page. So to do that is actually pretty straightforward. Let me just um, reduce the size here. So all you need to do is you just need to come to your index dot your index dot HTML here. So supposing I wanted to link, let's say the about section with this about section here i'll just come to my about section so section here and i'll give it an id about section and basically i i'm just going to copy this id so and then i will then go to my links and look for my about and instead of just having a hash there I'll have the hash and paste in the about section and then I'll save so if we come to this web page here and we click on the about you see that it will move towards the about section if um, let me see so let me just shrink this up a little so it's going to be the same thing if we use the menu so it will move to the about section but however, it will not close up this um, box here, this menu box here. So we can do that using JavaScript, but I'm not going to cover that in this um, tutorial. So basically, let's just go through what we've been able to build. So this is basically what we've been able to build in this um, tutorial. Um, I actually hope that you learned something from this um, tutorial. And if you did, um, make sure to leave a like and to leave a thumbs up and to share the video. Okay, so I'll leave links in the description to everything that you need to um, follow through on the tutorial um, if you're not subscribed to my channel at this point i think you should subscribe thank you so much for watching this see you in another video tutorial